Well, for years, wealthier nations have been pledging money to help developing countries deal with the effects of climate change, as Bill was just mentioning, but their commitments have not been met. And at COP26, smaller countries like Malawi have been calling them out for their failures. Well, earlier I spoke with the country's president, who warned of severe global consequences if rich nations don't keep their promises. You gave an impassioned speech at the COP26 summit. Uh, just for our viewers, I just want to play a short part of that. We must answer them with a media disbursement of the money pledged to least developed countries by developed nations, which is not a donation, but a cleaning fee. Neither Africa in general, nor Malawi in particular, will take no for an answer. Not anymore. A very strong speech there, Mr. President. And you spoke about the one billion US dollars that developed countries have pledged to developing countries like yours uh, that hasn't come. And you say it's not a donation, it's a cleaning fee. Just explain why. The reason is simple. If you look at the emissions that G20 nations do. It's over 80 percent. And developing nations' contribution is less than 1 percent. And therefore, this pledge which they made is a cleanup fee because they have helped pollute the planet. And together, we can clean it up. But they need to bear the responsibility, and that's what I mean. So part of the issue with these climate conferences is that countries make uh, pledges, they make commitments, that they're, they're supposed to be binding, but yet we've seen, as in the case of the Paris Agreement, that one billion US dollars pledged to developing countries never happen. That's just one example. And you re represent, uh, you're the chairperson of the least developed countries, so you re represent some of the yes. poorest countries in the world. What in real terms does that mean to you when, when countries make those promises and nothing happens? It just spells out more death, uh, more devastation, and more catastrophe around the world, and particularly for the least developed nations and the nations of the uh, sea. It's, it's important that developed nations recognize the fact that humanity is one. And they cannot be safe when everybody else is unsafe. Uh, Malawi obviously is, is an agriculture-based economy. It's particularly susceptible to climate change. Describe what you're actually seeing day to day. Almost on a daily basis, we see erratic rainfall. We see strong winds. Two years ago, the cyclone it died had just put us in a place where the deaths and the devastation, the crops that got eroded away, uh, meant that uh, trying to rise up uh, is difficult. Even now, at the beginning of a rainy season, I just got a report yesterday of strong winds blowing off roofs and injuring people. And so these are the kind of things that we face on a daily basis. And Mr. President, uh, your government, through the Ministry of Natural Resources, Energy and Mining, launched a national adaption plan uh, to increase resilience to help citizens and the ecosystem in Malawi adapt. Take us through that plan. The plan is to make sure that uh, we build resilience and we have early warning systems that we can adhere to and that uh, the people begin to realize that in as much as these are catastrophes we may not control, we can do something about mitigation and then adapting uh, certain uh, elements of uh, uh, resilience. That will mean uh, clean energy and will mean even development 
in terms of agricultural infrastructure and commercialization using modern technologies. It means that everyone should be able to understand it is their responsibility as much as we say developed nations are responsible, we too have a part to play. Absolutely, and world leaders are discussing ways to reduce deforestation globally. Uh, this is a tough issue in countries where uh, people's livelihoods rely on that industry. How does Malawi achieve sustainable growth uh, uh, while trying to tackle climate change? This is a reason we believe, for example, that without the support, the financial support of developed nations, the best plans that we have can only amount to about 5% success. And so we just plead that uh, the debt levels that we have to deal with, the COVID pandemic that we are trying to rise from, is something that has reduced our vulnerability to levels that uh, are unsustainable. But we do believe that with resilience and with support, multilaterally as well as bilaterally, we are able to forge a future that can truly make Malawi a self-reliant nation, able to have inclusive wealth because we are on a developmental trajectory. Malawi President uh, Lazarus Chakwira, we appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, still to come, while world leaders make sweeping promises at the COP26 summit, one young activist wants to be a voice for the billions of people who are not being heard. She joins us just ahead. Also, younger children in the U.S. can now get the COVID-19 vaccine. We're live at a children's hospital where some kids are getting their first shots.